Markets have finished a somewhat volatile week of trading. So let's jump in and take a look at what's going on. Uh, there's the charts there. Dow finished up a half a percent. S&P up just a little bit, quarter of a percent. NASDAQ down 0.6 with earnings coming out. Um, Google kind of blowing their AI debut. Uh, Amazon uh, threatening Facebook. So all kinds of interesting things going on out there in the world of earnings and in the world of inflation and the double peak inflation, the transitory disinflation and all of those things. So that's what the markets are digesting is whether or not inflation is really under control. Next week on Valentine's Day, we get the CPI print. So we'll get a little bit more guidance in terms of what inflation is looking like um, and what the Fed's going to be thinking. But the Fed is still saying, look, we're going to go further than you think, longer than you think. Markets are still not believing the Fed and buying in. So this is just consolidation for the Dow right here, kind of hanging out in this range and not really doing a whole lot, waiting for some decisions to be made when it comes to uh, the inflation and recession narratives. NASDAQ definitely in a reversal pattern here, uh, down for the week. Uh, S&P, same thing, finished down on the week. Uh, but if we throw on the moving averages, you know everything is still well above the daily moving averages. So let's take a look at the weekly moving averages. And everybody, the Dow is still above the 200 week. NASDAQ is above the 200 week. S&P above 200 week, below the 50 day below the 50 day, losing the 100 here and uh, still support on the 100 there. Dow above all, uh, barely above all ma major moving averages. So interesting price action there. Let's take a look at Bitcoin while we're in here real quick. And then we'll look at the VIX and the dollar. So here's the death cross on the weekly happening for Bitcoin. And we talked about the last time. Well, that's never happened for Bitcoin, but in the markets, generally, you know, thirty-five percent drop to forty-five percent drop whenever that's happened in traditional markets, and from the peak of the cross, so that would put you right back, put Bitcoin right back down around that. Now that put Bitcoin down around that twelve, thirteen thousand range if it played out. Uh, the question is, you know, will that happen? Can it happen? Of course, anything's possible. What's most likely? What's possible? So, like we talked about. Yesterday, Bitcoin <clears throat> looks like it wants to head back down to that 20,000 range. The other thing that's interesting about that is that when you look at the 200-week um, moving average here, you know, Bitcoin was not able to get above that 200-week moving average. But when you look at the 200-day moving average, that's where that lands. And that's been generally a point of support for Bitcoin, but it has been well under that for the most part here for, for a while since basically... Uh, well, lost resistance there. So since, uh, you know, back in December of 2021. So um, this might be the next stop for Bitcoin to try to find a little bit of support is on that 200 week or 200 day moving average. And, you know, of course that will drop as the price continues to drop. Moving averages are exactly that. They're averages of the price and they represent price action. So even the RSI, even the MACD, all these charts and custom indicators that, you know, people show you, and I'm no technical analyst. I just, you know, use this to, um, you know, identify trends, ranges, you know, whether, you know, what the macro, micro ranges and trends are looking like. And right now we're still in a downtrend in a macro bear market within a range of price that we're uh, looking at right now. And there's really not a lot of support to get down to this 20,000 level, level where this little bull flag consolidation was. Uh, this right here is to me looks a lot like distribution. And you know what, you know, why does this look like distribution? Because you want to talk about the max pain trade, right? You want to talk about uh, you know, the pain trade in this case was higher. So what does that mean? So the markets are designed to extract the most amount of value out of the most amount of people, to extract liquidity from the markets. This is a business game. So somebody wins, somebody loses on every trade. The market makers uh, are there to make money and the, the uh, investors are there to make money. So a pain trade is when the market is up here and everybody is shorting, like right in this area, the pain trade is to push the market higher because people are still shorting. So they have to cover these shorts. They have to spend more money to hold their positions and they end up getting liquidated. Then the market rolls over and goes down. And as it goes down, people start shorting and it kind of works down. But when people are down here and shorting, then the pain trade is to reverse on them, get them to cover those shorts, cost money as the market pumps up. So remember, markets are designed to extract the most amount of value, the most amount of money out of the most amount of people. 
And same kind of thing here in this whole rally since October, this has just been, you know, the pain trade has always been higher because as you get higher and higher and higher on these bear market rallies, uh, more and more people want to go short and then they just get liquidated and they have to hang on to those shorts and they have to pay to hang on to those shorts. But eventually the momentum gives up, markets reverse. And these, this is just the nature of the markets in the business cycle. Let's take a look at the VIX right here. VIX uh, rejecting a little bit off of that 20 level. The Dixie uh, looking to put in a little bit of a bull flag here and continue on. So we'll see what that looks like for the Dixie. Next stop is right around that 105 area. The 10 year catching a little bit of a bounce today, working its way back up to that 3.8 level and ultimately to see if it'll get above that 3.9. So the Dixie and the 10 year headed back to these January levels. What does that look like for the markets? So January, uh, right in this area here, when it popped the last time, January, right in this area here on the NASDAQ, when it popped the last time and right in this area here for the S&P, not the lows of October, but the next higher low coming off of uh, higher, lower low coming off of the October low. So, you know, in the identification of a trend, lower highs, lower lows, a trend reversal is putting in higher, lower highs and higher, lower lows. Um, but right now you have to get above this previous level here to take that out and look for more consolidation uh, or continuation. And right now we haven't seen that. So that's what I am looking at. And uh, we'll see you on the next video.